Hello everybody and good day. This is Fred with Tech Talk and I'm coming at you today with a video on a Ingenious Technologies 802.11ax Wi-Fi 6 access point. This model is an ECW220, um, but it's designed for your home or small business. A lot of people I see complain about internet speeds um, at their home or business. And when I look into it, they actually have the modem provided by the internet service provider whether that be Atlantic Broadband, Cox Communications, Xfinity, Verizon, um, they have the modem that the internet service provider uh, gave them and they're using that as a router. And oftentimes the wireless cards in those modems are only 802.11 and in some cases they're still 802.11 B or G. So when you have an 802.11 AX wireless card and your latest Android or iPhone 13, um, those phones have the ability um, to do seven gigs of speed, which is that 7,000 Mbps. When you have an 802.11n routing device um, that your internet service provider gave you, um, that can only put out a max of 300. Um, so you're not using nearly the bandwidth that's available to you. I'm gonna show you how to fix that right now. Content is useful to you. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video and comment some ideas for us to make more topics on. All right, so let's go ahead and unbox this bad boy. Um, this is a ingenious cloud managed um, 802.11ax access point. Again, the model number um, is ECW220. Okay, um, basically it comes out of the box just like so. It does have a mounting bracket uh, for a wall or ceiling. Um, there are two screws in this box. That you wanna be sure not to lose. They look just like that. And they essentially screw into the back of the access point, just like so. I show you this because the first time that uh, that I installed one of these guys, I actually threw away the hardware package because oftentimes I don't use the screws that come with these components. Uh, and sure enough, I needed them. And what would happen is you would mount this um, on the wall or ceiling and those screws fit right into here. You can turn them and this will lock into place and you can hold up the access point like so, okay? Very easy to install. Um, there is a port, um, hopefully you can see it right here, um, for your CAT6 cable, okay? So you want to run the cable um, to the location of the access point. Um, once you get it there, you just plug in your ethernet cable to the access point, like so, okay? The other end of the cord um, would be the location of your modem or router. Um, this access point is PoE. Um, so we talk about PoE switches a lot. There is a link in the description of this video um, for a quality uh, multi-gigabit PoE switch. You want to use that to make sure you're getting maximum bandwidth and throughput to this access point for your modem. But basically you're going to plug the router into one of the PoE ports. As you can see, this cord goes directly to your access point. One of the uplink ports here of your uh, PoE switch will be plugged into your main modem, okay? And again, that came from your service provider and that's what a lot of people are using right now for Wi-Fi in your home or business. It's important that you wanna use these uplink ports because oftentimes these will be gigabit or two gigabit uplink ports. Whereas um, if you use a normal port, you're only uploading you know, 1,000 Mbps, 500 Mbps, depending on the switch. Um, so make sure you look at the specs. Again, the link in the video um, description below is for a two gigabit switch, okay? Um, which is plenty for a home access point, okay? So I'm going to mount this now, and we're gonna log in with the PC to configure it. All right, folks, so at this point we have our router, our access point installed. 
it is plugged into the PoE switch I showed you earlier and the PoE switch is plugged in via the uplink port uh, to the internet service uh, through the modem okay so what we need to do now is we need to add that access point to the ingenious cloud uh, device management tool we have had previous videos on the ingenious cloud we don't have time to go into that in detail right now there's a link going across the top of your screen right now that walks you through how to set up the free uh, ingenious cloud how to register for a free account um, and how to add devices okay so we are assuming that you're at that point um, once you create your account and log into it it's going to give you the ability um, to add a network okay I've already created my hierarchy and I'm going to add a network now okay and we're going to call this network uh, we'll call it a YouTube demo and once we're there all we're going to do is check that our country and our time zone is correct and we're going to create a password um, for local credentials okay so admin is obviously the username uh, password can be a 4 to 12 character uh, password that you create okay um, so let's do that and as you can see we have tested our YouTube demo network um, but right now there are no access points or switches connected to this network and certainly there are no clients connected to it so what we want to do is we want to go to the bottom left hand corner right here um, this is our inventory tool and the top button is inventory and licenses okay and we are a business so we already have a bunch of access points uh, linked to our account but we want to link this new one okay so we're gonna hit register device right here and we're just simply going to input the serial number okay on the box um, that the access point came with there's a white label and that white label will give you the serial number of the access point so we're just going to type in two zero nine zero whoops C2 one one M4K let's make sure we got that right 2090 yeah 2090 C211 M4K we're gonna hit register all right and here we enter the serial number um, again that is on the box on the white label on the box um, and when you enter this you will have to enter capital letters okay okay so I've entered that I'll hit register and it says invalid number 209 All right, so let's see. We have 2090C2111 M4K and we'll hit register. Voila, success. So that's good. We've registered the access point. You can see it's right here. Now what we have to do is assign it uh, to a network. So once it's registered, you can hit the check mark 
and we can assign to a network. And of course we're going to pick our YouTube demo network and we're going to hit apply. What that is doing is assigning the MAC address, the serial number, for this access point and it's connecting it um, to our YouTube demo account. Okay, so now we'll go into the YouTube demo account and in the dashboard we see we have one online access points. Okay, the next thing we have to do is we have to set up our broadcast SSID. There's a star right here in the left hand corner of your screen and you can pick SSID. Okay, this is going to be the broadcast um, that your end users or the clients in your home or business are going to connect to. When you click on this, it defaults to Ingenious Wi-Fi. You can change this, okay? If it's a home, you could pick Wentworth Home, or Johnson Home, or Thomas Home. Um, or if it's the name of a business, you could put Tyco. Uh, you could put Home Depot. You could put whatever you want the broadcast to be, okay? Radio, we want to leave dual band 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, as we know 2.4 is stronger and 5 gigahertz is a weaker signal but faster. Here we want to enable WPA2 PSK, which is a password phrase, okay? It has to be 8 to 63 digits. Um, so we'll set up a password for our guests. As you can see, as you enter the password, it changes this QR code. So you could print this QR code and give it to your guests and they can connect to your Wi-Fi via QR code um, instead of going through the whole credentialing process. So that is kind of neat. Um, we also want to change, um, I can find it here, our routing from bridge to NAT. Okay, the reason you're setting up a router is you are most likely unhappy with the performance of your modem from your internet service provider that is doing your routing at this point. So if we leave bridge mode connected here, um, that device is still going to do the routing and we do not want that. When you pick NAT, uh, essentially this is allowing the cloud and Genius to enter uh, and give uh, your client's IP addresses to the cloud. Okay. Uh, which gives you a much larger range and avoids congestion. So you want to enable NAT, uh, not the default to bridge mode. Okay, very important. Once we're done with that bit of work, we're going to hit apply. If you wanted to employ bandwidth limits uh, with an access point like this, there's really no need to. But if you wanted to um, enable bandwidth controls, you could enable this and you could throttle your users. Okay, we could say each client can only use 5 Mbps. Okay. Um, or 10 or 100. Again, you have purchased and spent good money for a Wi-Fi 6 cloud managed access point. You shouldn't have to uh, limit or, you know, control anybody. The only way you would do this is if you have, uh, if you live in a rural area and you have very limited resources from your internet service provider, say you only have 20 Mbps from them, um, obviously at that point you'd have to limit um, what your clients use. Uh, but mo most places now, uh, we live in a semi-rural area and we have a gig, we have a thousand Mbps, so there's no need for bandwidth controls. Captive portal, okay, this is very cool. If you want to uh, give a customized greeting to your guests, you can turn on the captive portal, okay. Check, click through, okay, here, and hit apply. The next screen, okay, is a splash screen. This is where you can customize your greeting. Anybody picking that... Uh, Wentworth Family Wi-Fi broadcast would be prompted to this screen after they enter the password. Okay, so you can say, welcome to our home, enjoy the Wi-Fi, right? Terms and agreements, uh, again, if it's a business, you might want to keep this on. If it's your home, again, you might want to just say something like, enjoy the surfing, right? The other cool thing you can do with this um, is you can add pictures. So if it's Thanksgiving, you could put a picture of a turkey. If it's Christmas, you could put a Christmas tree. Uh, if it's a Super Bowl, um, you know, you could put the, the Super Bowl logo or the teams. Um, to do that type of stuff, you just click insert image here, right? And you can pick an image right off of your desktop. Okay, I have no idea what this is. How appropriate. It's a security camera. 
So I can double click this and it would actually load that picture into my greeting. Right? Pretty cool. So we'll leave this. We'll apply this and leave it. And once we're done applying our settings, I'll log into this broadcast with my laptop and show you what this looks like for the end user. Okay. So we've got a spelling problem there. So the other thing that you may be interested with this is a schedule. If you have children <clears throat> and you do not want them on internet um, for certain time periods, uh, say Monday is a school night, right? And we do not want people on the internet. Well, we've got to enable this first, enable scheduling. We do not want people on the internet, say after her, let's say nine o'clock on Sunday, right? That's usually a good bedtime. Um, so, oh, I did it wrong. So we'll put 21 here. We want it unavailable from 21 to 24. We can use our slide at this point. Um, so where you see blue, um, the internet is available. So right now we're saying, okay, from 2100 to 2400 on Sunday night, we do not want the internet available. Um, and on Monday, we do not want it available from midnight or zero zero until, let's say, 1500 when the kids get home from school, right? So we could slide this. to 1500 okay so and then we would want the internet available you know all day Tuesday all day Wednesday all day Thursday so on and so forth okay so what you can see here is anywhere you see gray the internet's not going to be available so from 2100 until 3 o'clock Monday afternoon nobody's going to be able to get on the internet okay um, say you wanted to do the next uh, day um, the same way. Okay, you could use the slide, make the internet not available from, you know, 21 till 1500 by doing the same type of thing, right? So you can set up a schedule um, for when your kids are allowed on the internet. Or my wife th might do it for me for when I'm allowed on the internet, but that's another story. Okay, so VIPing under access control. This would be a TV, a smart TV, or a PlayStation, or an Xbox, um, or maybe the residents of the home, their phones. Um, when they are connected as a client, you can actually click on that MAC address um, and VIP it, which will allow uninhibited access for that device. It won't ask it for a credential. So um, that way, every time you use your smart TV, um, the the cloud's not going to expect a, um, you know, a password from that. It's going to say, okay, this MAC address uh, is okay. We're going to pass it through. So, yeah, the cloud's very cool. This is well worth the money. Again, a lot of the phone devices that are coming out now have the new 802.11x Wi-Fi 6 uh, wireless card in it, okay? And that <coughs> allows a, a lot of speed through the phone, okay? As we said, um, there are... Uh, 3.5 gigs of speed um, per stream with Wi-Fi 6, with a Wi-Fi 6 phone. Okay, that's the max theoretical speed your phone can accept. Also, a lot of these phones, like the new iPhone 13, it's 2x2, two two, so you can have two streams of 3.5 gigabytes, which means the phone can accept 7 gigs of internet if you have it to provide to the phone. Okay. 802.11n, the old modems that, that most of the internet service providers gave you, that's 802.11n technology, okay? It's not 802.11ax. So that modem can only put out 300 Mbps to your phones. You're not using a fraction of the capabilities of your phone. So that's why you want to upgrade to a 802.11ax Wi-Fi 6 router such as this that matches the speed of your phone. Okay, and as long as your internet service provider can give you that infrastructure of speed, you can pass it on with the Wi-Fi 6 router to your Wi-Fi 6 phone um, and utilize the phone the way it was intended. Hopefully the video was useful. As always, we'll see you in the field.